Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're out the range with a brand new product from BT USA, and that is the GHM 9. Now, this little handgun, which it technically is a handgun, looks an awful lot like the KH 9, but other than outwardly appearances, has almost nothing in common with that other handgun or SBR or submachine gun. This is a brand new design. This gun basically marries a lot of the features that BNT has worked on with various designs all into one very affordable package. This thing comes to market at right around $1,250 to $1,300. Now that will not include the, the brace that you see on here. That's just for the pistol itself in one magazine. So today we're gonna shoot this little guy with a bunch of different ammo. This will be the gun's very first range session, and we'll talk a little bit about the features later in the video where it's a little bit warmer. But right now, what we want to start doing is putting some ammunition through the gun and see how it performs. So let's start off with some, this is some Fiocchi 124 grain ball. You've seen this plenty of times here on the channel. This is also available from our friends over at Freedom Munitions. They no longer just sell their own brand, but they sell a number of different brands of ammunition for very affordable prices. As a matter of fact, there is a discount code down below. I receive no kickbacks from the use of that code. It's just something that Freedom Munitions does for the fans and viewers of the channel as a thank you for buying Freedom Munitions and for watching the Military Arms Channel. So I have a full 30 rounds loaded into a standard BNT type magazine. This magazine is used by a number of different BNT firearms. So it's kind of nice if you're a BNT junkie like I am, you buy one magazine and it works in most every BNT firearm you have. All right, so we stick those nine millimeter rounds in there. I have the charging handle set up on the left hand side, which is more intuitive for me, but you can reverse this to the other side. As a matter of fact, when the gun ships, this charging handle will be over here. I'm gonna go ahead and charge the pistol. I'm going to extend the brace. This is a tail hook. We'll talk more about that here in a minute. And now let's fire off the first 30 rounds out of this BNT nine millimeter pistol. What's funny, guys, is I have yet to zero the MRO on here. This is an MRO Trigicon Optic on a Midwest Industries mount, but we have our IPSC target downrange at about 35, 40 yards, and I'm seeing big chunks of wood flying off the target, which tells me my left and right is pretty much spot on, so maybe all I have to do is adjust the elevation, if anything. Now, you will notice that the bolt locks open on the last round fired. An outstanding feature I like to see on 9mm carbines or 9mm pistols like this. Now, when I said nine millimeter carbine, keep in mind, guys, this gun is SBR ready. And by saying that SBR ready, when you file your form one, you get your form one back, the butt cap that comes on this gun is already set up to accept a standard BNT stock. What you see here is completely different, but is also offered from BNT. Again, we'll get into that later in the video, but it comes already set up so when you get your form one back you can go to hkparts.net or bnt usa and order your side folding polymer stock drop it right on in a couple of minutes so this gun's really easy to convert into an sbr once you get the paperwork back all right let's load it up and shoot it some more with some different types of ammunition just to see how well the gun works next up we have 25 rounds of 124 grain american eagle again this stuff is also available over at freedom munitions website now what's kind of cool about the pistol is that you have completely ambient controls. This is your mag release, this is your bolt release. After I insert the magazine, I hit the button here, chambers around. Now keep in mind guys, this is a reciprocating charging handle, so don't grab the gun like this because you'll cause a malfunction. Make sure your thumb is forward of that charging handle. Bolt locks open, runs just fine. So we got Fiocchi and some Federal through it. Let's see what else we can dig up to shoot through this little pistol. Let's take a look at how the GMH9 ships. Now BNT is known for using rather spacious plastic cases to ship their guns in, and this one is no exception. Now these are not airline approved, so you will need a different case if you plan to travel and check this as baggage. 
But here, as you can see inside, you have a nice foam padding that protects the gun, but gives you plenty of room, even if you want to put ammunition in it. You will have an owner's manual, an Allen wrench that I'm not quite sure what's that, that that is particularly for. Uh, that's because I don't typically read owner's manuals. As a matter of fact, you're going to watch me take this gun down for the very first time just by trying it, okay? Do have a magazine loader, have one 30-round magazine, BNT style, a sling, and then the pistol itself. So let's go ahead and close up the box here, set that aside. Now, this gun is going to look an awful lot to you, perhaps, like the KH-9. And it does look a lot like it. As a matter of fact, I have my limited production 400 made KH-9 right here next to it. It looks very, very similar. However, they have absolutely nothing in common internally or in function other than they're both blowback guns. Everything inside the guns are, is completely different. So it would be misleading to say that the GMH-9 is an evolution of the KH-9. I think it's clear that it was inspired aesthetically by the KH-9, but functionally, they're not the same. Again, aside from being blowback. So let's go over some of the, the features of the gun as it ships. Now, this is exactly how you would take it out of the box. The charging handle is on the right-hand side. However, it's very easy to reverse this during field stripping to left-handed operation. As a matter of fact, I probably will go ahead after we field strip it here and put the charging handle on this side because that's more intuitive to me when I shoot the guns. You'll also know that this aluminum receiver has a monolithic 1913 rail across the top. It has flip-up sights. Again, these come with the gun. Backup sights, I would call them, because I do plan to mount an optic on the gun. They flip down. Front sight's adjustable for elevation. Has a knob. No tools are required. And the rear sight is adjustable for windage with knobs. Again, no tools required. It has 1913 rails bolted onto either side of the gun. Swiss logo, BNT, made in Switzerland. Now, the upper is aluminum, the lower is polymer. It has ambi controls, so it will start with the safety here, two position safety. Ambi control there on the safety, you have levers present on both sides. Uh, let me grab my magazine here out of the case. And you will notice that we have an ambi mag release. I can release it from this side, or I can release it from this side. The same thing is true of the bolt. Now here on the bottom, a lot of folks might not, not catch this, but here on the bottom right next to my index finger is a bolt lock. You can push up on this, draw your bolt to the rear. Yeah, there you go and it will lock the bolt to the rear. So you have that option of doing that to lock it open manually without having to insert an empty magazine. Very well thought out. Now, not only, is, uh, not, not only are the selector lever and magazine releases AMB, but so is the bolt release. So here you have your magazine release right next to your index finger. If you reach a little bit higher, insert a fresh magazine, hit this button, and the bolt goes home. Same thing on this side. Magazine release right here bolt release right there. So the gun is completely ambi with the exception you can't change the side which the gun ejects from. So let's go ahead and take it apart. Well first of all let's point out one more thing. Here in the front you'll notice that the barrel extends out past the receiver. If you remember the KH9 which I have next to it here, the tri-lug adapter is really really close actually almost inside the upper receiver to accept more cans this particular setup has the barrel further forward, so you can use a multitude of silencers. Not only do you have a tri-lug HK style mounting system, but you also have a thread protector here, which protects half by 28 threads, which is a standard thread pitch here in the United States. So you have the option to run tri-lug or just a standard silencer with a half by 28 threads. There has been some concern on the internet that this pistol will not cycle hollow point ammunition. Now keep in mind in Switzerland and many parts of Europe, hollow point ammunition is banned, not just militarily, but it's also banned for, for police use and definitely banned for civilian use. So many of the guns developed in Europe aren't designed 
to fire hollow points. They're designed to fire ball rounds because that's all that's available, literally. But B&T is now selling these weapons on the U.S. market. So it makes sense that they would want to make some changes to the gun, which they have. This is a current generation gun to cycle hollow point ammunition. I got two mags in here. I'm just going to randomly pull some out. This is ZQI hollow point ammo. This is one of the brands of ammunition that was shown not to work previously. Let's see what happens. First time, guys, I don't know what this is going to do. Let's see what happens. Definitely chambered that first round, no hiccup. In the videos that I've seen previously, you couldn't even get the first round to load. Now let's see if the little gun fires. Ah, beard puller. I think it's safe to say that the gun will cycle ZQI hollow points. Not all that common, right? A lot of people don't use ZQI hollow points. How about some 124 grain Federal HSTs? I believe this was another brand of ammunition that was of concern. Chambered that first round, let's see if it cycles it. And beard pull. Jeez, I'm, I'm gonna be bald right here, guys. Locks open everything. So it would seem that the changes that BNT has made to the gun means it will reliably cycle the ammunition. This gun is not special built for me. This is the current generation gun. They went back and revisited it. So all guns being sold going forward will be capable of handling the hollow point ammunition. If you have a gun that doesn't handle the hollow point ammunition, contact B&T and they can modify your gun for you so that you can cycle hollow point ammo. Now for range use, which is all this gun will be used for in my case, I'm just gonna shoot ball ammo out of it. I'm not Bill Gates, I can't afford to feed this thing gold dots doing mag dumps like I'm doing out here today. I'm gonna do those mag dumps with affordable ammunition. But if you decide to use this for defensive purposes and you definitely wanna use hollow points, so far we're having pretty good luck with the gun in its current configuration, cycling those hollow points. Let's move into the field stripping. Check, make sure that the weapon is clear. I'm gonna go ahead and just lock the bolt open, look inside the chamber, make sure that the weapon's empty. In this case, it is. Now I'm gonna let that bolt go home because we have a recoil spring in here that we don't wanna compress any more than it's already compressed. Be very careful when taking this gun apart because even at rest with the bolt home, the recoil springs are still under pressure from the butt cap. You have two pins here in the rear that can be used for field maintenance. The first pin, which I'll pop out, will allow the lower polymer group, trigger group, to hinge down for simple cleaning. If you look inside here, you will find a trigger mechanism that is strikingly similar to an AR-15. Some AR-15 triggers may work in here. You'll notice that the back of the hammer here is, is, is blunted. Uh, some triggers will work, other triggers won't. There's no guarantee that if you buy this gun with the intent of putting something like a Geissele trigger in it, that it will work with the gun. It may take some fitting to get it to work. Other than that, it's pretty darn close to an AR-15 trigger. So I don't wanna say that it works with it. I'll probably never take the trigger out to find out. But for those of you that are curious, you may have to do a little bit of fitting, but you might get a different trigger into it. For me, trigger works just fine. You have another pin here in the front, just like an AR-15. I'm gonna pop this pin out. And I'm just using the end of a Bic pin here to start the pin coming out. These are captive pins, so you will not lose them in the field. And now we've separated the upper from the lower. The lower made of polymer and is very lightweight, but very, very hard. It's, a, it's one of the harder types of plastics. It's not like the Glock, which has a very, very pliable polymer. All right, that leaves us with one more pin. And this is one we wanna be careful with. Now in typical BT fashion, the rear end of this thing is set up so you can easily convert this to an SBR if you so desire, and it uses a standard BNT stock. All right, so you have this butt cap on here that's already set up, and, and I've SBR'd um, at least one of their guns, two of their guns, 
and I found that it takes less than a minute to actually install the stock mechanism should you decide to go this route. Now let's go ahead and pop this pin out. Now guys, I'm gonna have to be very careful here because I wanna keep pressure applied. Now it's not just gonna pop out automatically because in typical BT fashion, the end cap goes on and then pops up into a locking recess. So I don't have to worry about popping the pin out initially. It won't go flying. Okay, the pin's out. What you have to do is there's a little bottom piece here. I, I put my thumb on it and I'm gonna pry this down and once it comes down to a certain point, then it will be released from the receiver and the recoil spring can shoot this cap. So don't point this at your face, push it, because that's what happens. <laughs> I was gonna try to capture it with the rear and I, I wasn't able to. So you saw the recoil springs go shooting out of the gun. I'll be right back. I have to go pick up my recoil springs. I think I may even put a dent in the ceiling. Digging around in peaches, we were able to find a couple of other flavors of hollow point ammunition. All right. This is Remington Golden Sabres. All right. Golden Sabres. We have 25 rounds. It's an entire box. Loaded. Chambered just fine. Let's see if it cycles. Take the safety off. and cycles just fine. Guys, I have probably burned through. Nobody donates this ammo to the channel. This is stuff I've had to buy, so we're gonna shoot $100 in hollow points. These are 147 grain gold dots. Now, these are a very common load. Matter of fact, this is what I would normally carry before I switched over to the Underwood stuff. Let's go ahead and see. Chambered that first round just fine. Let's see how the gold dots work. and she locks open just fine. I'm gonna go ahead and say the gun runs pretty much just about any flavor of hollow point you can find. We've had no malfunctions out here with it this afternoon and uh, any concerns you guys may have about hollow point function, hopefully this video puts those concerns to rest. Just make sure you get a current production gun. Real quickly guys, if you would like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best possible way to do that is to directly support us over at Patreon. At Patreon, you guys support us directly in return. We try to give some stuff back to you guys. We do original blog posts, we post behind the scenes information, we answer all of your private messages, but we also do things like give away $300 in ammunition every single month. Our friends over at Freedom Munitions give us that $300 to give away. So three lucky Patreons get $100 in ammunition every month, and you can use it to buy whatever ammunition on their website. And they don't just sell their own ammo, they sell other brands as well. Our friends over at Forge from Freedom, who make our MAC t-shirts, they give away five t-shirts every month to five lucky patrons. And again, you can pick whatever style of shirt that you want. But if you're a squad leader or above, you get special pricing over on the Copper Custom website on select items. But all of our patrons will post coupon codes every once in a while, once or twice a month, so all of our patrons can get a, a blowout deal on something like a flashlight, um, you know, red dot sights, firearms, all sorts of cool stuff, bags, rests, things like that. So that's how we try to give back to you guys for directly supporting us over on Patreon because YouTube has demonetized us and they're doing it not just the gun channels, but the airsoft channels, the knife channels, the gaming channels. So that's how we've decided to move forward and that's through direct support from you guys. But also guys, please consider supporting other folks out there that are content creators that you regularly consume their content as well and they have Patreon pages. Please consider supporting them as well. Thanks guys, we do appreciate that support. All right, so I've now recovered my recoil springs and their guide. This is the piece that came flying out. Now, having never disassembled this gun before, knowing that it would come flying out, I probably have to try a different technique to get the butt cap off, which would just be to use your other thumb to block it. But uh, yeah, be very careful. Don't point this at your face when you're taking it apart. We'll put it back together here in a minute and show you how to do that properly. But there's your recoil springs and guide your butt cap. Now you will draw, I'm assuming, your bolt to the rear here using the charging handle, and yep, your pin comes out. And it doesn't look like there's any special way to put the pin back in, all right? It's all round. And now your bolt should just come right out the back, and it does. Now the gun is fully stripped for field maintenance. Now here's your bolt. Notice 
If you remember the APC-9 video, one of the things that makes these guns extremely unique and so soft shooting is the fact that they incorporate a hydraulic buffer system. Now, in the case of the APC-9, that's incorporated into the butt cap itself. On the APC-9, it would be incorporated into this piece if it were to, to mirror its design. However, BNT has now opted to include that into the actual bolt itself. So there you have it, guys. The gun is fully disassembled. All right, guys, the ears are off. The can is on. This is a Griffin Armament Revolution 9 suppressor in its K configuration. And we have 147 grain Freedom Munition standard ball loads. This isn't the more expensive hush line. This is just a standard 147 grain load, which is extremely affordable. All right, let's see how quiet this guy is. Oh, got another hair. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you guys, I would be completely bald on the right side of my face and my mustache. <laughs> These sights are spot on. I'm shooting that wooden post down there. You can hear the bullets hitting it. <laughs> well, to my non-sound meter ears, this is extremely quiet. That mag dump at the end, I didn't get a bunch of gas in my face, which isn't surprising. BNT is really good about sealing the entire rear end of the gun up, so if any gas or whatever gas comes back down the barrel, it goes right out the ejection port. I'm not getting myself gassed out because there's simply no place for the gas to escape due to the BNT's incredibly tight fitment. Wow. The more I shoot this thing, the more I enjoy it. Now keep in mind what we have on here for a suppressor right now is on the direct thread, half by 28, but you'll also notice we do have the tri-lug if I wanted to use a tri-lug adapter. I am really digging this little setup. I'm gonna try something a little different. We got some more American Eagle here, 124 grain ball. I'm gonna go ahead and put the magazine in. I'm gonna hit the bolt release on the other side, which uh, works just as good. So you can bring it up, hit that with your thumb. That's pretty uh, intuitive as well. All right, shoot that Ipsic in the face. I will say it likes to pull mustache hairs if you get your face too close to the mechanism. Wow, you know what's funny guys? I literally just put this MRO on the gun and I am chewing the face out of the Ipsic target from about 35, 40 yards. So I don't think I have a whole lot of zeroing to do. If I got to do any, it's just going to be very, very minute adjustments. We may have to do the final zeroing back at the shop in the bullet trap where it's nice and warm. It's not so warm out here today. <laughs> now we're going to put it back together using a different piece than this end cap. One of the very cool features about this firearm is the fact that you can put a brace on it. And BNT is working with Tailhook from Gearhead Works to make a very, very cool and very smart looking conversion. So if you're looking to do a Form 1, before you file that paperwork, you might want to consider bracing the pistol. I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. Now, this is where your spring and guide rods ride, as you can see, normally inside of the bolt. So I'm going to take the bolt put it back into the gun, and as I mentioned, I'm going to reverse the charging handle. So I'm going to push it in until I see the holes align. And now I'm going to put my charging handle on this side because I think that's where I'm going to prefer it. Now one other thing I want to point out, if you look here, there's a little bit of an Easter egg once you take the butt cap off. You won't see it if the butt cap stays in place, you just hinge the lower down. But once you remove that butt cap, there's a little tiny mouse eating a scorpion and that's where the name of the gun comes from, the GHM-9. This is a grasshopper mouse. Grasshopper mice are known to eat 
scorpions. That's a play on the competition. The CZ Scorpion Evo is going to be in direct competition with the GHM9. It's kind of a cool little piece of whatever to note. <laughs> I was going to say piece of history, but it's too, too new of a product to call it history. All right, so now what we're going to do, knowing what I know about the recoil system, I'm going to go ahead and put the springs into the holes inside the bolt first versus trying to line them both up independently. I'm, I'm sorry, together. And there you go. So now I've inserted the, the recoil springs into the bolt carrier. Now I'm going to take the guide rod, line it up. This will be the easiest way, guys, versus trying to do this with the springs on the guide rod. Now, see how much I have to compress those springs? That bolt's all the way home. See how much I have to compress those springs to get the end cap on? So that's why I say be very, very cautious when taking this apart. Let's go ahead and show you what we're going to replace that end cap with. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the tail hook brace system. It's made out of aluminum, and there's a little release button that you can push that opens the mechanism up to allow you to rest your arm and grab the pistol grip. To store it, you simply close it, it will latch, and it will stay in the closed position. This is from Gearhead Works. Very neat, very cool looking brace system. Now the mechanism that it's attached to, the end cap and the what would be stock struts, are manufactured by BNT. So you will need this part from BNT and this part from Gearhead Works. We hope here at Copper Custom, because we do plan to retail these guns, we hope to have complete units available for sale. That'll come later. So keep an eye on the coppercustom.com website. So if you want to SBR the gun, you can buy this setup, which adds roughly six to $700 of retail value to the gun. So it's not inexpensive to brace it. But the nice thing is, is over 90% of this mechanism is reusable. So should you file a form one, all you need to do is take the tail hook off, put your BNT stock on, and now you have a proper stock for your BNT pistol, which you've now converted into an SBR or a short barreled rifle. $200 tax is required to do that. This requires no tax. All right, so let's go ahead and put this on, see if I can do it without blinding myself. All right, and this is, this is polymer. It's actually, most of the weight is actually in the tail hook itself. The mechanism itself it feels fairly, fairly light. So yeah, most of the weight is in this aluminum tail hook. It's not polymer, it is made out of aluminum. All right, so now I'm gonna set this on, and you notice a little nub on top here. This little nub aligns with the recess in the receiver. So you have to push this mechanism down. It takes a little bit of finagling, it seems. And then up and push your pin across. And now you have your brace system installed, okay? The brace works with a little button right here on the bottom. Push the button in, collapse the brace. Push the button and extend, and extend the brace. All right, now let's put our lower assembly back together. To put them back together, this is very similar to an AR-15. I'm going to go ahead and pin the front first. Doesn't matter what order you use, really. That just helps me line up the rear pin a little bit more easily. And now I can close, hinge close the trigger group and magazine well and push that pin across. Now the, we the weapon is completely reassembled. Fairly simple. Just keep in mind the recoil springs are under pressure. Go ahead and close the brace up and you have one very handy little package. Now you can of course use the sights that are supplied with the pistol, or in my case, I prefer to use a Trigicon MRO mounted via a Midwest Industries quick release system. And we will zero this later. That, yeah, let's move that forward just a little bit further. What I'm trying to do is keep it away from the charging handle. Maybe I will leave it there so I can charge the weapon and not have to worry about hitting the sight. So I'll leave about that far back. Let's see if it co-witnesses. Again, guys, this is brand new. Sure enough, I have an absolute co-witness. So you can see the sights perfectly centered in the MRO itself. So that's kind of a cool touch. All right. There you guys go. Pretty slick setup.
I want to point out that the controls on the pistol here are very, very easy to use. I really like how big the Ambi safety lever is. It's really big and serrated. It's easy to get to. You're not going to miss it in a hurry. I like the fact that I can move the charging handle from this side over to the other side with all guns, with the exception of the AK-47, although I do like the side charging handle of the Ace. I prefer to have my charging handle over here, where you're going to find it on a SCAR, ACR, other modern firearms, but you have your choice, and that's a really cool thing to be able to do. But the other point I want to make is that not only is the selector lever easy to get to, one thing you're going to have to do if you're a hardcore AR-15 user is to learn the controls here by your index finger. I love that they're there. I love that they're present on both sides of the gun. But right here, if you're an AR-15 guy, you're going to hit that thinking it's your magazine release, but that's your bolt release. Your magazine release is down here. They're right next to each other, but once you get used to it, it is so easy to use. They're easy to find, they're easy to use. And also, as I've pointed out before, you can just drop the magazine in and drop the bolt that way so you can actually have a visual cue as to which one uh, releases the bolt and which one releases the magazine because you can use your loading hand thumb. Pretty cool stuff. Guys, I really appreciate the fact that you've joined us and been with us for 10 years. A lot of you, some of you guys may have just found us a day or two ago or a few months ago, but we're now celebrating our 10th year in having the Military Arms Channel. We couldn't have done it without your support, guys. Thank you so much. If you would like to support the Military Arms Channel, of course, you have Patreon, but also you can swing by our online store, which is Copper Custom. At Copper Custom, we have a lot of great products at great prices. Plus, we now have an auction site. We stumble across all sorts of cool stuff out there. And if it's a one-off or a two-off, We'll put them up on the auction site, but another thing we plan to do in 2018 is to take some of the guns we use in video and auction them off so you guys can have access to them. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for all those years of support. And now I'm going to fire my last magazine before I go and warm up.